Boy, is it daily light today. It's bright, it's shiny, and it's hot. <laughs> okay, maybe not hot for normally, but considering that we've had nothing but cold weather, it's feeling extremely warm. You know, lots of times I take for granted that people understand what devotionals are, where they're from, and Daily Light is a scripture-only collection that was done by a family that was in England, and they got together and they used to share scriptures back and forth, as was common in those days to not have television and radio and entertainment in the normal sense and to not necessarily have electricity, though I don't remember exactly if it was the 1800s or how far back it was, but at any rate, they didn't stay up as late, possibly, as we do, you know, all night long with the internet or whatever we may be doing, but they would be beside the fire, you know, staying warm, because that was one way of heating, and they would share scriptures back and forth, and suddenly it became obvious to one of them that they should collect them, and so they began to write down the scriptures that, as one person shared one, like, say, God is love. The next person would say, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so each one would go around and around sharing a scripture that seemed to focus or seemed to add to the idea of either God is love or love or God. And being that there were men man, the husband, the wife, and the children, that's quite a variety of perspectives. You know, I would love to see that happen in a Bible study, you know, because often we do a lot of dictating in Bible studies as opposed to receiving back teaching that might be coming from one of the people that's participating in the study of the Bible. And that's what I like to see is more of a participation and participatory thing than for me to sit here and go, hey, I say that is because I'm not reading this really just for you. I'm reading it because if I don't share it, I probably won't read it because I'm just as lazy as anyone else. And there may be days when I just toss the book and run by and do what I want and not care that God is listening and God is watching and God is waiting to maybe warn me of what today's going to happen prepare me for what's going to happen, give me the tools I need so I'd be there for maybe someone else who's not prepared. Let's get ready, shall we? Seems like a good idea. Morning reading. The Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Trust in the Lord, and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. As long as he sought the Lord, God made him to prosper. Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. And thou shalt say in thy heart, My power and the might of mine hand has gotten me this wealth. Is not the Lord your God with you? Hath he not given you rest on every side? Think about those. All of them direct you back to the recognition and realization that it's God and not you. On the evening reading, why reason ye these things in your heart? Be not weak in faith. Abraham considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. It is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. 
why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Behold, the fowls of the air, your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Why reason you among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread? Do ye not remember the five loaves of the five thousand I fed? My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You know, I know that at times, if you're watching this and you're not an old Christian or you're a new Christian or you're an inexperienced Christian or whatever you want to call it, fleshy or, you know, just finding out for yourself what's this all about, you might hear something that says, my God shall supply all your needs according to riches of glory as some, you know, like vain, kind of like, eh, eh, right, right, right. You know, you just say that, but it doesn't work because after all, here I am hungry. You know, when I got saved, it was a radical religious experience, meaning that I exploded with joy and I was all gaga and you know, running around, witnessing Jesus everywhere I go. Had a backpack, had long hair. Decided to try something different, got a haircut and shocked my wife. She uh, still is in a state of shock every time she walks in the door. She keeps saying, who is that guy? I don't normally have short hair too often, and normally I've, I've had long beards, short beards, goatees, mustaches, you name it. And I appear differently each time that I do, except for I can't get rid of my nose. It always goes wherever it knows, and somehow it's my nose. But I do appear differently whenever I have long hair, short hair, whatever. But the point is, is that when I was back in the day with long hair and excited and run off, People would tell me all kinds of things like, God will take care of me, God will do this, God will do that, God will do that. But you know what? He didn't take care of me when I was stupid. <laughs> so don't be stupid. If you see, you know, groceries sitting on the side of the road, look around and see if it's somebody left them there, you know. Take it to them. But after you checked around and found out that they don't belong to anybody, maybe they're for you. Don't despise the way God may provide. In other words, a lot of times I think people mistake how God provides with what he provides. Because Elijah, even at one time sitting in a cave on a mountaintop, had crows and if you could really read the scripture, carrion birds bringing him food. Now, we can either go one of two ways with this one. We can either say that, you know, they picked up some dead bodies and they bring them meat. Or we can say that God sent them with something else. And I'd like to think that it was something else, not just dead flesh or whatever. But in my experience, I have always found that it's not just the platitudes that work, but it's when you put your faith to work with God. When you actually challenge God and say, God, I don't understand this. So, where's the food? And if he shows it to you, take that one little step and thank him for it. Because once you take that step and you move forward, it becomes easier and easier to see that God does supply all your needs. But you have to take the step to talk to him, to relate your issues and your problems that you see to him. He already knows what they are. But you have to recognize his solutions, and the only way you will is by talking to him, by devotions, by recognizing his answers when he gives them to you. And that's what devotional is about. Recognizing that God is speaking to you.